Hey friends, welcome to Meals with Maria. Today I'm gonna bring you some new recipes for those super cheap cuts of chicken. While prices are rising dramatically on some meats, I find that the chicken leg quarters and chicken drumsticks are still going on sale for as low as 79 cents a pound, depending on your area. My dad sent me a picture of the price of chicken breast unprompted because we're geeks and we share stuff like that. And it was $3.99 a pound, no sale at the grocery store the other day. And I don't know what it is in your area, but that's high for us. So. We need to be working with those cheaper cuts of chicken and I wanted to give you some new ideas to spruce up your recipe binder and make something delicious out of something so inexpensive. So let's get to saving some money. This first recipe is so easy and it comes from my sister-in-law. She says you just take some adobo seasoning and make sure to olive oil up your chicken drumsticks. And this is a drumstick recipe specifically. She says they are the best for this and this is how her family loves them. So get some olive oil on those chicken drumsticks. You can make as many or as little as you like. Then just pour some adobo seasoning, make sure that they are fully covered. And then we're gonna bake these at 425 degrees for 45 minutes. And that is it. This is the best recipe. It's also delicious because the simple one seasoning allows for a lot of really good sides with it. And you can cut this up and make chicken salad the next day. I tried that because we had a little bit left over and I thought it was absolutely delicious. I was like, I think I may just wanna make adobo chicken sometimes and then make chicken salad out of it for the week as a meal prep rather than even just for dinner. Both ways are amazing and taste phenomenal. Now I know there's a completely different adobo chicken recipe, so I hesitated to call it this, except that that's the type of seasoning you're using on it. <laughs> I served mine with some baked beans and it was absolutely phenomenal. That was like a perfect side. And if you wanna see that baked beans recipe, I will put the video that that is in down below. It is a Great Depression meal, so you wanna check it out after you finish this video. The next recipe is for a baked chicken leg quarter, and that is actually kind of that drumstick and that thigh connected. And then I had some drumsticks as well, and I wanted to make sure that we had plenty of chicken left over, so I decided why don't we cook all of those up and make everybody happy. So we're just gonna add a seasoning to this. We're gonna get started by spraying these with some olive oil spray, or if you just wanna use some regular olive oil or whatever oil you have on hand, it's gonna be absolutely fine. Just wanna make sure that they are nice and covered so that they're gonna stick. And then we're gonna put our seasonings on top. We have one teaspoon of pepper, a quarter teaspoon of black pepper, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, a half a teaspoon of paprika, which I swear paprika and chicken are made to be, and a half a teaspoon of thyme. And again, just like that adobo chicken, our seasoning is gonna do almost everything for us. Just go ahead and sprinkle that over those, make sure that they are fully covered. We're gonna bake these in the oven at 425 degrees for 40 to 45 minutes. And then you can actually let them rest for five minutes once they come out. Now, another option with this is to grill them. You can absolutely grill those adobo legs or these baked chicken legs as well. I decided to use some baked recipes because I know not everybody has an outdoor grill. But if you do and it's the summer and you're feeling like grilling, go ahead and put this seasoning on your chicken and throw those on the grill and cook them as you normally would cook any bone in chicken. And they will still taste delicious, I promise you. It's gonna be absolutely fine, if not even better. I also think that any bone in chicken would benefit from this seasoning. So any type of bone in chicken you might have in your freezer, because I know we hopefully have our freezer stocked with those sale items, go ahead and throw the seasoning on there, bake for a similar period of time, and you're probably gonna be very happy. So I think that this can really switch up depending on what you have. You can see here the chicken is bubbling and ready and the skin is so crispy on this. The flavor is phenomenal. And how easy was it really? This is a quick one to put together when you have a few other things to do and set it and forget it. This next recipe is for a crispy baked cornflake chicken. And this is one of those recipes that I picked out to make and I was 
chomping at the bit ready to go and make this recipe. I was so excited. You wanna start with a nine by 13 pan and just put a couple tablespoons of melted butter in the bottom of it. This is key guys, if you have butter, please use it. If you don't, you can use an oil or a spray, but that butter really does a lot for this. So I would recommend it. Then you're gonna need three quarters a cup of either fresh eggs or egg substitute. For some reason, the recipe recommends egg substitute, but I ended up using fresh eggs because that is what I had on hand. Now in a separate bowl, I'm going to crush up some cornflakes. I just bought a box of cornflakes and I'm just crushing them by hand. You could put them into like a Ziploc bag and smash them like that, whatever your favorite way to do this is. I liked the by hand method or the bag method because you are gonna end up with some kind of larger pieces and that way you really know that it's a cornflake. Uh, you do wanna get it pretty crumbly, but the the bigger the pieces that are kind of in there like here and there uh the more fun it is or at least i i kind of like that on the chicken so personal opinion you want to leave a couple of bigger pieces in there and then to that you want to add in one cup of all-purpose flour and then a teaspoon and a half or so or you know whatever you like of your favorite seasoned salt i'm using like a lowry seasoned salt and that was delicious and you just want to mix all that together because we are going to dip our chicken in that I love this recipe because it is so few ingredients. You just added three ingredients to that dry mix and then we're gonna use our egg and our chicken and that is it. So easy. Dip your chicken in your egg or egg substitute mix and then dredge it inside of that dry mix and that is coating your cornflake chicken. It's that easy. Now, I don't know, you could use a fork or you could try and use tongs. I feel like I've been there before and I've tried to not use my hands on something like this, but it's basically impossible. I feel like if you don't get that like thick coating of dredge on your fingers where you have like these... <laughs> I don't know, like flower fingers, uh, then maybe you're not doing it right. I don't know. If you guys have better ideas on how to avoid that, I am totally down. Maybe I should use gloves. I'm not sure. But, you know, sometimes I'm just, I, I make sure to wash my hands and then I'm just going in for it because sometimes you just really need to touch the food to know that it's going to be, you know, make it yours. And the recipe actually calls for four drumsticks and four thighs. So if you have that, you can absolutely do it that way. I, again, had all drumsticks, but that's so that's what I'm going to use. And it says to put everything in a 13 by 9 pan. And I tried that and I felt like I was, I was feeling like they were too close together, honestly. And I know that when I bake something in the oven, especially like this, I really want the outside to get crispy. And the closer together that they are, the more the juices are going to run into each other and the softer the sides are going to be. So I did end up changing up and bringing out, like I just used like a cake pan to put four of my chicken drumsticks in and I felt like the spacing was a lot better then so I do recommend that if you feel like things are too close together just grab another pan and throw your chicken in there and then that way they're going to bake a little bit spaced out and I think that the edges end up being crispier. So you do wanna bake this at 425 degrees for 20 minutes, and then you wanna go in and flip over your chicken. And you can see how the chicken that was sitting in the bottom of the pan has this nice golden crispy glow to it. So we're gonna make sure that we get that going on all sides of our drumsticks today. I'm gonna put this back in the oven and bake it for another 15 minutes until the inside reaches 170 to 175 degrees. And this is amazing because it tastes like a fried chicken. The flavor is there, but it is so light. No deep frying for me. I serve these with a couple of recipes you'll see in some upcoming videos. So just a little teaser for you. I wanna thank you all so much for watching today. I hope you got some great recipe ideas for your cheap cuts of chicken. If you wanna see more awesome budget meals, make sure to click on the Great Depression Meals video that's gonna pop up right about now and check that out because that way you can see those baked beans and you can check out some other depression era meals. Make sure to subscribe and like this video if you haven't already pick that notification bell so you get notified when I post because I'm posting three times a week and I just appreciate you guys so thank you so much. I'm